You're watching Talk with Audrey. I'm Audrey Adams. Welcome back. With most students now back to school, teachers and parents alike are concerned about the lasting impact that the pandemic has had on students. Well, there's new research from Understood. It's a social impact nonprofit organization and guide for those who learn and think differently. And Unidos US, the largest Latino civil rights and advocacy organization in the United States, has found that students returning to school this year might experience increased academic, mental health, social, and emotional challenges for learning. With more details about the study and about what parents and educators can do to help, Amanda Morin, Director of Thought Leadership and Expertise at Understood, and a mom to children with learning and thinking differences, and Maria Mosier, Senior Director of Education at Unidos US. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks so much. My pleasure. So let me start with you, Amanda. Uh, tell us more about the details of the 2021 back to school study. Certainly. So we talked to almost 500 educators and over a thousand parents to talk to them about what's on their minds and what they're worrying about going back into this new normal of a situation. And what we found is that all of them are worried about academic development, social emotional development, and well, and the emotional well-being. But parents in particular are worried about how to start conversations about the learning challenges that they have seen during this remote learning period with those teachers. 44% of parents are saying they don't know how to start those conversations. And with that kind of anxiety going on with both parents and children, it's really important to start those conversations right now. So it's, it's really an unusual situation where everybody's looking to work together and not always sure how to start the conversations. And interestingly enough, if you're Hispanic or African-American, if you think that you notice something, the first thing that comes to mind is perhaps that their child will be stigmatized. So that probably has an impact on parents even initiating that conversation. Absolutely. There's, there's concern about that stigma. There's concern about, um, you know, what kind of resources are going to be available or is this about my child getting in trouble? We also found that for uh, Black and Latino families, there's a lot of concern about the cost of being evaluated for learning and attention differences. Uh, and that's concerning because students should have access to a free evaluation. Um, and part of the, the goal of doing this research and creating some tools to support families is to help put them in touch with those resources that, that are there because every child you know, deserves the opportunity to learn and to be supported by their community. Well, do most teachers notice a difference between something that is you know, happening just in passing, like, I mean, everybody's got stuff going on, right? Even children. And going back to school after this pandemic, they're probably uncertain themselves about things like, what did I really miss at school? And also a lot of the kids might not have had an opportunity to do distance learning because they didn't have a computer. So maybe they're gonna be a little further behind and they're worried about where they stand with their own classmates. What can teachers and parents do to help them through this really difficult time? Uh, that's such a good question because as a former teacher, I see both sides of this as a parent and a teacher. I think the most important thing to start with is finding that baseline of information, figuring out where kids are starting, what information they have, where their social emotional development is, where their academic development is. We're gonna meet children where they are and then start taking, a, taking note and keeping track of where they go from there. So what teachers can see is how are kids gaining skills? Are they continuing to learn? Are they continuing to grow? And when there's persistent concerns, that's when teachers will start looking at this and putting more supports into place. Because we're all coming back into this a little bit awkward, a little bit different, and making sure that it's okay to, to recognize that. But just keeping track of how things progress over time is one of the most important things for both teachers and parents to do. And speaking of taking note, I noticed that Take Note uh, was created and developed and launched in partnership uh, with the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, tell us about uh, the website. Sure, sure. So Take Note was developed with the American Academy of Pediatrics, and it's a web-based interactive guide. Note is a memory device. It stands for notice, so you can start noticing if there's something going on that seems new to you. O stands for observe, to, to keep track of those patterns and things you're seeing. Talk is the T. T stands for talk, so you can talk with pediatricians and educators in your child's life. And E is to start engaging and having those conversations. It's 
multimedia, you have video clips, you have audio clips from people who are also going through this, checklists, emoji kinds of interactive things you can do with your child. And it's available in both English and Spanish. So you can start those conversations with the information in front of you. And it also has conversation starters in case you don't know how to start having those conversations. Maria, what are some of the other challenges that educators are facing in terms of really evaluating their students, especially if they haven't seen the face-to-face -face in like a pretty long time? I'm sorry, there, there are many, many challenges because the processes that are used to identify students, a lot of times were delayed over the last year and a half. Um, and a lot of the evaluations may not be appropriate or may, may need to be kind of understood a little bit differently because they might be looking at a student's typical progress in a year and trying to compare that to the previous year is, is really hard because we know that it wasn't a normal year. Uh, so I think take note is really special because it allows for that communication between the school and the home and allows us to bring in things like changes in the child's behavior at home, uh, changes in their relationships with friends or with siblings, uh, changes in their diet or their sleeping. All of those things can indicate um, both stress and trauma that kids are going through and also be indicative of um, a learning or attention difference. And so it's really important to communicate with teachers and, and doctors who can help sort those things out. What about parents with children that have learning differences such as ADHD and dyslexia? They are probably going to have more challenges going back to school. How do you mitigate that? So parents who know that their children already have a learning difference like dyslexia and ADHD, they already have a pipeline to that communication with the school. They may have a program in place for that child to have specialized instruction. And what they, what they can do is really talk about not only what they're concerned about, but what went well. Because for some students, we know things went really differently and well. Um, they had the opportunity to get up and move when they needed to. They had the opportunity to sort of rearrange their schedule as needed. So thinking about not just what you're worried about, but also what went well and communicating that to the school is really important. So you can keep track of the progress and make sure that your child is meeting the goals that were set, up, set out for them very specifically as well. Maria, what are teachers looking for going forward and what would be more helpful to them? I mean, are there any other things that we need to pay attention to as parents to support the teachers? I think communication as, as early and often as possible is very important. We have all been through so much in the last few years and teachers don't know what the specific circumstances are for their kids. They don't know who has lost a primary caregiver to COVID. They don't know who has moved or maybe changed their living situation. Um, all of those things are really important in addition to the kind of the learning pieces. So making sure that you establish the communication early and recognize that teachers, you know, many teachers are also parents living through this. It's a very challenging time for everyone. So I think starting with kind of the assumption of good intentions and wanting to offer grace to each other in this difficult time, um, while also being curious about how we can best support our students is important. All right. Yeah. Oof. There is so much going on this year. So guys, going back to school is not just going back to school. We're all going back to school with our children. Uh, can you tell us a little more about the website uh, and where we can find Take Note? Yes, absolutely. If you want to find more, it's at understood.org slash take dash note, understood.org slash take dash note. Estados Unidos, the nation's largest Latino civil rights and advocacy organization, also advocates for policies and programs that provide Latinos and English learners with high quality education from early childhood through college, career, and technical training and beyond. So for more information about the work that they do and their network of over 300 affiliates across the country, visit unidosus.org. And we've got to get through this pandemic and get our kids back to school and back to their education and their life. I want to thank you both so much for joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's more to come on Talk with Audrey. I'll be right back.